Stephen Francis here for College Baseball 360, reporting from Austin, Texas, the site of the Austin Super Regional between the TCU Horn Frogs and the Texas Longhorns. It's been a good series so far, and uh, on a side note, I have to apologize if you hear any motorcycle noises in the background. It's because baseball is not the only thing going in going on in Austin this weekend. There's also a big motorcycle rally taking place here in the city, and apparently every one of them is staying here at the same motel that I am. So. Take that for what it's worth. But anyway, back to what's happened on the field so far. Game one took place yesterday, Friday afternoon, at Dishfog Field. The story of the game, young freshman pitcher for TCU, Matt Perk, went seven and two-thirds innings, struck out 11 on 110 pitches. Phenomenal performance and, and a big gutsy gutsy showing from a freshman that came in never having pitched at Dishfog Field. One of the most hostile environments in the NCAA and one of the most really full of tradition uh, facilities here in the NCAA as well. A lot of history here. Texas players that have come through here, gone on to big major league careers as recently as Houston Street, going all the way back to Roger Clemens and even well before then. Uh, but like I said, Matt Perk went almost the full distance, but he reached 110 pitches after slowing down later in the game, but didn't give up his first hit until the third inning and then didn't give up the second hit until the fifth, and then that was pretty much it until later on in the game, coming in the seventh inning was that third hit. It was a big one. It was from Kevin Keyes, who went two for four on the game yesterday, but he had that solo home run, but that was all they were able to do against him. Three to one. Let me tell you how TCU did it. TCU manufactured their runs the old-fashioned way, a leadoff single in the top of the second inning from Curry. Then Joe White came up, singled up the left side. Curry advanced to second. Witte was out at first then on a sacrifice play. Uh, it was a bunt. Then Wyke advanced to second. Curry advanced to third. Then Aaron Schultz came up and hit a sacrifice fly to a right field to get the first RBI of the game. That gave TCU the one nothing lead. They then put two more runs on the board in the top of the sixth, and this was really the pivotal point of the game for the Horn Frogs. The way they did it, they came up in the sixth inning with – Featherston getting hit by pitch to lead off the inning, then a walk by Brian Holiday, the catcher. Of course, that moved Featherston over to second. Coates hit a ground out. Actually, it was a sacrifice bunt. That moved Holiday to second. Featherston advanced to third, and then Holiday then advanced to third on a wild pitch, scoring Featherston. Curry then was intentionally walked, and then Joe White came up and hit another sacrifice fly, this time to right field, and that was the next run for TCU of the game. It was uh, overall just an electric atmosphere here at Dishfalk Field. 3-1 to one the final score. Your classic pitcher's duel now to today. As you probably know, TCU didn't clinch it today. Texas took the big win. 14-1 to one the final score. Some highlights from that one. Cole Walla was one of the big hitters. He, he went one for six for, TC, or for Texas, but he had the big hit. He had a three-run home run that he hit, let's see, I believe it was in the fifth inning, and that was part of a huge fifth inning. But really, the big story of the game came, in my opinion, in the top of the third inning. Texas got four runs with two outs, and it was after a controversial play. It was a line drive to Jerome Pena for TCU. Leaped in the air with one out, made the catch to get the second out, threw it to, to second to Featherston, who was covering the base, from what I'm told, it looked like he got the tag down in time. Umpire said otherwise, and of course, you have to go with what the umpire says. And shortly thereafter, Texas put four quick runs on the board with some big crushing hits uh, that came at the top of that inning. So it was four to one, or excuse me, four to nothing at that point for the Longhorns. They put up another run in the fourth, and then in the fifth, they did their most damage, putting up seven runs. And uh, on the day, Kevin Keyes was one of the big hitters. He went two for four with he went two for four with an RBI and two runs scored on the series. That puts him at four for eight with three runs scored, two RBIs, and of course one of those big hits was the home run yesterday. So he he's done very well so far. Some other big performers today for the Longhorns. Tant Shepard went four of five with three RBIs, and. On top of that, Kevin Lesson went 4 of 5. He had three RBIs and two runs scored. So just a big offensive outburst for the Longhorns. Uh, some notes that were made after the game, uh, specifically 
about momentum at this point. That, that was one of the big themes in the press conference this afternoon, talking to Coach Jim Slosnagel. And you know, I like what he said. He said momentum would be a big problem if Texas had won in walk-off fashion or on a big play uh, to close out the game, but that's not what happened. He said uh, this game was pretty much decided from the fourth inning on. So from that point, our guys knew uh, it, it, it's all go from here. He even referred to the fact that pretty much it's a you know it's now a zero zero ball game. It's now a one game series. Tomorrow's the championship game, and then that's really exactly how it works. The winner's going to go to Omaha, the loser goes home. So that's going to set up what should be one heck of a finale tomorrow uh, to what's already been a great series so far. So yesterday we had the pitchers duel. Today we've had the offensive outburst. What we're going to look for tomorrow. Uh, on the mound for the Horn Frogs will be Kyle Winkler. He is he's completely different than Stephen Maxwell and Matt Perk. Perk is the powerful, emotional young freshman. Meanwhile, Maxwell's kind of the quiet guy. He sits there very quietly, very calm, very cool, just goes through the motions. Normally goes out and just wins, does whatever he has to perform. Uh, on the, uh, compared to those two, Winkler, from what I understand, is a little bit of the goofy guy. He's kind of the clown. Uh, he goes out and just has fun out there. But like Maxwell and like Perk, he goes out and he throws his pitches, he hits his spots, and he wins ball games. Uh, he doesn't have the electric stuff that Perk does, and he's also he's not as experienced as Maxwell is. But Winkler actually last season was the freshman starting in the big Super Regional Series against Texas. Uh, of course, that one was won in three games by the Longhorns last season. So some things to take from that. Winkler does have experience to draw back on from last season that he's going to use tomorrow when he takes the mound. Pitching for the Longhorns is Brandon Workman, and he's one of the already one of the biggest names in Texas pitching history. He threw last season the 21st no hitter in the history of the Longhorns. So he, you know, he's got big shoes that he's filled already. He enters tomorrow's game with a record of 12 and one with a 3.43 ERA. Uh, he's made 16 appearances. 14 of those have been games that he started. He's pitched 99 and two-thirds innings so far, and he has struck out 97 hitters. So he's really close to that one hitter per inning pitched strikeout mark, which you know that that's kind of what I define as a power pitcher. If you're averaging one strikeout per every inning pitched, you're striking out a lot of hitters. So there's my take on the game tomorrow. My early and kind of bold prediction, I want to say that TCU is going to win this thing. I don't know if that's going to happen, but again, that's my prediction. I see t uh, TCU eking out another pitcher's duel a lot like Friday's game. I'm seeing somewhere in the ballpark a 3-2. to two. Uh, It'll probably be whichever team makes the mistake first, that's the team that's going to lose this ball game. Would I be surprised if Texas won? Absolutely not. And I've gone on record before in some of my articles and even uh, on some of the podcast stuff that I've done here for College Baseball 360 saying that it's unfair that TCU and Texas have to play each other this early in the playoffs. But it is what it is. These two teams are playing one more time tomorrow. The winner's going to Omaha, and it should be a good one. Texas and TCU first pitch, 3 o'clock Central time. So that'll be 4 Eastern. That'll be 2 Mountain and 1 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, hope you check it out. It is on ESPN2. Also, there are several sites that are streaming the audio online as well. That'll do it here for College Baseball 360. Again, I'm Stephen Francis, and we'll give you a recap tomorrow of the Longhorns and the Horned Frogs from Austin, Texas.